I do advocacy work for the Federation, know a lot of people in here. What we want to do is thank everybody coming tonight on their personal time to talk about something that should be important to everyone at Holden Beach. And everyone around North Carolina comes to Holden Beach. This is a Holden Beach and all of our beaches in North Carolina are special. I want to thank the Holden Beach Property Owners Association for sponsoring this event with us and uh, securing this facility for our, for our presentation and our interactions, a chance for you all to ask questions of, of, of folks that know a lot about this project, know a lot about our coastal geology. The Coastal Federation, just to, uh, for those of y'all that don't know, we've been around since 1982. I have to make my pitch on what we do and how we do it and how we're able to do it. Um, we work with citizens like yourself on coastal issues, try to help people solve problems so we have a sustainable, healthy coast. We have places to swim, clean water, oysters, shrimp, and places where people can have a vacation home. And uh, so we have a coast that will be here for generations and generations. And we do this by memberships. So I'm going to make our pitch. We have a, a one. Our first membership we uh, acquired tonight was one of the first people that got here. So if you're interested in helping us and being involved, we would appreciate your support and would value your membership because that's how we do what we do. Um, what we're going to do tonight is talk about. Uh -huh. Talk about uh, the trouble growing that's proposed at Bowman Beach at Lock of Folly Inland. For some reason, I'm not. There we go. And in 2011, the General Assembly, uh, the Coastal Federation has, has made their position known about putting hardened structures on our beaches. And what we've done, we reached out to the people in the, in the communities that could be affected by these proposed structures at uh, Figure 8 Island at Rich Inlet here at Holman Beach at Lockwood Poly Inlet, at Ocean Island, at Shalot Inlet. And uh, we, we did, we were involved in the EIS permitting process for the proposed growing, or the growing that was permitted at, at uh, Ball 8 Island. But um, in 2011, we feel that science was trumped by politics. Uh, we, had a, we had a prohibition against terminal growings and hardened structures on our front ocean beaches for a reason, because these beaches are dynamic processes. And, some of the experts here tonight are going to explain why they feel that way and answer your questions. We invited everyone at Holden Beach uh, through the Property Owners Association. We invited the town. Uh, we invited the uh, consultant, ATN, uh, who works for the town of Holden Beach, the consulting engineer. We invited Dow Corey, the third party reviewer. So what we wanted to have is everyone here. So you get a chance to ask questions of people that either oppose the terminal growing, people that support it, so you can make up your own mind about the information about the science. So what we're gonna do tonight, we're gonna, we have a series of speakers and they're all experts in their field. Um, and I'm gonna introduce right now, Tom Meyer, the president of homeowners, property owner, the Holden Beach property owner. <laughs> and then we'll get going. But this is your chance to ask the questions, uh, to find out the information, and hopefully when you get to a process where there is a permit or not a permit, you will, you will be more informed on how to make your own decision. Mike, your, your, Mike, your mic. Mike, your mic's feeding back and we have a tremendous roar back here. What would it sound like without a mic? Can I can it? talk loud. I can talk loud. Can you hear me? Yeah. yeah. We're good? Okay. Well, thanks, Mike. Thank you for the dinner from the Coastal Federation. I told them that this was a very interesting topic to turn out without dinner, but we'll see if maybe you can influence us through our stomachs. Um, but uh, thanks very much, and, and we're glad to, that we can work together to host this session. Uh, we, we know that it's been needed. Um, Rick, if you go to the next slide, we uh, perform of all the property owners on Holden Beach and surprise, surprise, everybody thinks the beach is important, either very important or important, 97%. So there's 3% think it's neutral, and then nobody said it wasn't important. So um, we knew then that the beach strand is the most valuable asset we've got here, and that it was a very important issue to all of us. Uh, we also asked a question about the terminal groin at that, on that survey, and 
49%, roughly half of the people that responded said they needed more information to uh, form an opinion. They, they, they did not have enough to really take a side. And it was split pro con from there, um, but the majority were the undecided when they put that in there. So, so we knew that a session like this was definitely needed. Um, at our last meeting, which was the Easter weekend meeting, uh, we got the push. It, there was a nomination, or there was a, a, a motion from the floor to conduct it in conjunction with the Coastal Federation. It passed unanimously. So we're here, and we're, we're glad to be here, and we think that it's a, it's a very valuable thing, and that uh, we hope we get a lot of information out of it. Next slide. Um, yesterday, we received the results of the survey that was conducted by Duke University um, students for Holden Beach property owners regarding the terminal groin and uh, the opinions of property owners on the groin. So to me, this just confirmed the need for this session because it was almost the exact same uh, findings that we ended up with, which is people are mixed. I think they were about 50-50 mixed on their survey and the majority said we need information. We absolutely uh, need more information to form an opinion. So. That's the goal here, and, and the goal is to try to provide facts or expert opinions. Um, I'd really like to move away from the emotions, <coughs> the feelings, the stories, into something the concrete. I've, I've got this goal that if we could all agree on the facts, maybe we'll all get led to the same conclusions, or at least the debate will be how much sand do we need? You know, does it need to be every two years or three years? How much we're going to pay? You know, items that we can actually have a good constructive debate versus generalities and, and emotions. So, so that's my goal, is to try to get the facts out. As Mike said, we invited Fran Way from ATM. ATM is the organization that does the annual beach monitoring report. They did the modeling that went into the environmental impact statement. They've been serving the town for several years. Uh, we invited Don York from Dow 40. Dow 40 assembled the, or the uh, environmental impact statement, took the information from ATM, put it into the, the statement, filed it with the Corps of Engineers, and uh, was, was involved. We also invited the town manager and the mayor. Uh, Dow 40 declined uh, the town, and ATM didn't respond. So unfortunately, we are where we are. Um, we're, we're hoping that we can uh, collect your information and still answer questions from both sides, pros and cons. Uh, the good news is the information, Rick, if you go to the next slide. Um, as I said, ATM does the annual beach monitoring report. So their findings on the report and their basis for a lot of the models that went into the environmental impact statement is available on the web, the town's website, and also our website. Um, if I can see if I can work this. Here. Right. Yeah. Um, what's really interesting is they summarize all of the beach nourishment projects that have gone on the, on the beach. So they summarize, here's on the east end. So those are all the projects in terms of the year, the amount of sand that was put on the beach. Um, it's really difficult to get costs because the town has done a very good job of piggybacking on dredging projects and co-sharing. So the costs are not there. We're hoping to get them, but those are the projects. That's what's been going on. <coughs> And then also they show the shoreline on the east end here and the orientation of the channel. And as, all we know, as we all know, the channel goes back and forth. Right now, it's very much oriented to the west, which is in our favor. The east end's actually a creek. In 2000, it was oriented the other way. It shows the red line for the 2000 shoreline and the, and the black line here for our current 2015 shoreline. So as the channel swings back and forth, we accrete and we erode on the east end. But this is out there. As I said, hopefully we'll get questions. We'll be able to bring ATM in to answer any questions. This is basically the kind of modeling that's available or that they performed that went into the environmental impact statement. Next slide, Rick. This is on the Corps of Engineers site. Um, if you printed it all out, I think somebody's seen it. It's about five inches thick. Um, it's got everything. Uh, the essence of it is they evaluate six alternatives from do nothing and retreat to renourishment to terminal groin. Uh, I think chapter five, probably one of the most valuable. Those are the six initiatives, but chapter five <laughs> got tables that come up with the cost, the number of houses that would be lost in that scenario, the property values of those houses, you can compute the property taxes they would bring in. 
how much renourishment's needed, and, and an estimated expense on what it would take. So, you know, the 34 million number has been bouncing around. It comes from that table and that report. So, once again, we're hoping maybe after, and this is the draft environmental impact statement. So, the final is coming soon. And we're hoping that once the final uh, statement is out, we'll then be able to have another maybe session like this, have ATM, have Dow Corey, have the town here, and we can ask more specific questions about the impact statement, the numbers that are there, and, and what the position is. So I'm, I'm, I'm sure that uh, you're going to hear a lot about these documents tonight, but I'm sure we'll have another opportunity to look at the final, final uh, numbers. And last slide, Rick. I strongly recommend you go there. We've got all this information. We have a, a hot topics page down there. It has terminal groin. We've got a terminal groin page. So we've got a link to the to the monitoring report. We've got a link to the environmental impact statement. And then you can't see it, but we've got links to just about every article and publication and news story that's come out. If you want to dig into it and, and really uh, come up to speed with what's out there and what's being said. So, once again, uh, I'm really glad that we're here hosting this. I'm glad for the good turnout, and I'm hoping that we can hear some expert opinions, get some facts, and give you the information you need so that you can uh, form your opinion, because there will be a vote on this. Uh, the commissioners who are here tonight will be voting. They're very interested in your opinion. We live in a democracy. That's what we get to do. We get to vote and, and get to decide, and that's, that's probably a ways off, but the sooner the better in terms of, of understanding where the property owners fall with regards to this issue. So, thank you very much. Right back. Thanks, Tom. Can y'all hear me? Yeah. Good. Um, as Tom said, we're here to exchange information. We're here for y'all. Um, Southern Environmental Law Center represents the Coastal Federation in, in, in our decision and our objections to projects like this. We have uh, Jeff Gisler uh, with Southern Broward Law Center and the cohort with the program for development.